To a visitor to Clackwood Sound like myself, the sea is beautiful and spectacular. But to people who live there all the time and work on it, it's always been provident and very dangerous. It remains so to this day. I mentioned Rod Palm earlier. Well, while I was staying in Tofino, Rod and his son took what they thought would be a simple short boat ride up the coast. This is Rod Palm. Yeah, I wanted to take you out here to see what the coast is like. There's all these outcroppings of rock off the shore. And when you're traveling up the coast in a small boat on a day like today, when it's what we call flat calms, just a bit of a ripple on the water, you, you run through between all these rocks. And in this particular instance, we were doing precisely that. No problem. There's just a calm sea. I didn't bother putting a floater coat on. I just thrown it on the front of the forward swart and Jilly was sitting on the midship for he had his on. <clears throat> anyway, when we come back through and going between these rocks, we seen there was a very large wave came up and lifted the boat up and went crashing through and, and smashed into the channel where we normally go through and white water surf everywhere. It was a bit startling because the day was so calm and I wonder where in hell did that come from? crank the wheel hard over and figure we better get the hell out of here and uh, just as I started cranking the wheel around I seen another mountain of water coming straight at us and off the starboard side it was starting to break about a hundred feet away from us and so the only course of action in a circumstance like that is you've got to you've got to get over it you either get over it or smash through it or something because if that crest gets a hold of you It'll pick up the boat and literally throw it onto the rocks and just smash it to pieces and whoever was in it on top of that. So it just about had it straight into the sea and the, the bow had actually almost reached the top of the wave. But this white line break that was charging down the side of the swell was moving so fast that uh, we, we couldn't get over it. And it, the wave just got too steep. And even though it was full throttle, it was actually sliding backwards down the face. And then the, the wave hit the side of the boat and picked it right up and stood it on end. So it's almost like you were to take the bow and lift it straight up in the air. And uh, this got so steep and that the boat was going to flip right over what we call pitch pulling. It just goes end for end. And I could feel that if I hung on any longer, that it was going to, my weight actually, it was on such a critical balance point, it was going to flip the boat over. So I let go of the wheel in the hopes that the boat would fall back down again. Everything happens so fast, your, your de decision making and your feelings and everything just bang, bang, bang. Uh, the calculation was, well, you're going to end up in the water, no big deal, you're in the water all the time. And I, I make my living in the water. So I thought, well, I can swim for it in the water. But uh, I had very large boots on. These are what we call hip waders. And I've always heard stories about these hip waders being so bad in the water. And what it is, is they have a big open top on the leg part that act like little parachutes and so you can push the boot down into the water very easily but you when you try to pull it up there's a lot of resistance there because of it's parachuting action on the large tops and so as the wave broke over and pushed me down and i started kicking back up i couldn't get up it was i was stuck down there and a week previous to that it had been the last drowning victim that i had to pull up and he flashed through my mind and i thought that's it, I'm going to be another statistic on the bottom there, just like him. But I managed, by forgetting about the, my legs, they weren't doing me any good to get up to the surface. And by just pulling with my arms as strong as I could, I managed to break my nose and my mouth out of the water on the, in the, well, as the trough of the wave passed over and got one gulp of air and went back down again. And I, the boots were very tight and I got a hold of them and tried to pull them off my legs. But I couldn't do that because the rubber was getting hung up behind my knee as when I tried to bend my legs and you couldn't slip them off. So I got the, the heels of both boots and started working back and forth at them to try and get it. If I could get the ankle part slipped off, I figured I'd be okay. But I was going down further and further in the water 
So I clawed back up for another breath of air to see if I could make it up for another breath of air, and I did manage it, but I got a little water that time, not very much on that breath. But uh, I could feel the boots starting to come loose, and it was... It just felt so good. They're moving. I'm actually getting them off. And uh, this is over a period of about uh, two minutes, maybe three minutes. And this is not really having a good breath of air to work with or anything. I was very close to the point of passing out. But uh, I got to the surface again, and this time I could get just about my whole head out of the water. Great, I made it. <laughs> I can breathe again. I can swim now. It's funny how the things like that happen because being in a very critical state like that, your immediate thoughts are, are self-preservation and there's nothing else in your mind. But as, as soon as I got rid of these encumbrances and was able to sit on the surface and get up to the surface and get a couple of good breaths of air, I thought, the boat, Gilly, my God, what the hell is there? And I swung around in the water and looked and here he was, soaked in the boat full of water and he, had, uh, he was coming back for me. It was the greatest sight that I... I felt so good, I was laughing in the water, and so elated, and I started swimming towards the boat, and then it, it hit me what happens if another wave is coming, but as it was, there was only two waves, and uh, a poor guy, I, I don't know what must have been going through his mind, but it was really a, quite a traumatic thing, he's only uh, six years old, and he went over and grabbed the wheel and slowed the boat down. And cranked it around and come back in for his dad. <laughs> I feel that uh, I think he really saved my life that day. We got ran out uh, a couple of hundred yards and just stopped and we hugged each other for about five minutes and and watched the sea there going back over this channel. What was going on? And there was nothing. It was just like what you're looking at now, just a, a very low, shallow swell, relaxing its way into the beach. <laughs> 